Okay, hello and welcome to another Spanish session with Mrs. Harmer. Here we go, let me share the screen so you can see what we're up to today. Share, cool. Make this as big as I can so you can enjoy it as much as you're going to. Okay, here we go. So first thing I'm gonna say right now, right from the get go is today we need quite a huge amount of imagination, okay? Because we're going to imagine that we're going to go to a market, it's outside. Let's see the sights in our mind right now, okay? So shut your eyes for a sec. It's outside. You can smell the smells of all the food and deliciousness being offered. And we're particularly going to be looking for these items here. I'm not gonna say any more, but imagine we're in our city. Needn't necessarily be Canterbury. It's a place they speak Spanish, okay? So we're, we're going to our city. And we've gone to a market to get some of this produce here. Okay, and you're also going to need to use your memory a bit because we're going over stuff that I taught you a little while ago. So it's, it's in there somewhere and we're gonna see if we can find it once again. Okay, so we're in the city, we're going to the market we might have to ask for directions. So I thought we'd go over direction words again. Remember these? We did do these quite a long time ago, but I'm just going to remind you and then you're gonna have a little practice with people near you, okay? So, first one I'm going to show you, simpler one out of the two. Gira a la derecha. Gira a la derecha. Go on, have a little go now. Great, and that means go right. Okay, so it's this one here. You are going that way. Okay, turn to the right. Here's another one. And I'm going to remind you with the English accent first. It's not particularly pleasant, but we are going to Spanish it up, okay? So this one here says, gira a la izquierda. Okay, so let's English accent it first, just to make sure you've got the pronunciation. Okay, so I kind of tend to break it up. Izquierda. Scared, a bit like boom. I'm so scared. Okay, so that's the English version. Let's Spanish it up. We need a bit of the uh, rolling R's here. Listen carefully and then repeat. Scared, scared. Okay, so the whole thing here a la scared means turn left. Okay. Here's another one that you'd recognize because if you remember way, way back, we, we did those maps and you had to write instructions to get people around the map. Todo recto. Have a go first and then I'll tell you what it means. Todo recto. Fantastic. That one means go straight on. Okay. I've got two new ones to throw into the mix just because we're gonna have a bit of old, a bit of new. Okay, so this one here, sigue recto, sigue recto. Fantastic, means keep going straight ahead. And this one here, para, means stop, okay? So I want you to have a go. Gira a la derecha. Gira a la izquierda, todo recto, sigue recto, para. Okay, have a little bit of a go at that right now. Go. Okay. Right, we're gonna move along now. Pause if you need just a little longer for that part, I think you will. Okay. So today we're going to the market. Nosotros vamos al mercado. 
okay? And we're on our way to look for some fruit and vegetables. On the way, and see this in your mind, please, people. On the way, we go past all these different places, okay? Um, I'm going to read them, and then I want you to turn to the people near you, or just have a think for yourself. What could they be? Some of them do sound a little bit like the English, okay? Remember, we're in a city, so there could be things there that cities would have. So, first one here. El supermercado. You have seen that one before. El café. That one too. You've seen it before. These are the ones that are new, but I think you can work them out. La famacia. El hotel. El estadio. El restaurante. El cine. La panadería. La carnicería. Okay. Right, now is your moment. I tell you, I'm giving you so much chat time. It's unreal. Okay. So now is your moment to turn to the person near you or just have a think for yourself. What could these places be? I'll give you a little time now. Okay, now then, I'm going to type underneath what they are. And you could be either going, oh, I knew that all. Oh, really? Okay, so the first one is one of these. I'm thinking you must have got that one because we have done it before when we did our maps. And also, it's very like the English, look super and market because this says market okay next one yeah not too bad right so cafe el cafe is a cafe basically and this one here we spell it differently but it's the same sound so this one here is one of these okay it's a pharmacy chemist shop this one here is just too easy because El Hotel is a hotel. Come on, I had to give you an easy one there. Now this one is all for all you football fans out there, okay? You need one of these if you have a big football team and they want to play somewhere, you need a stadium, okay? El Estadio is a stadium. We haven't got one here, even though we're a city. But you know, lots of cities do have them. Again, pretty easy one here. Just gonna make sure I spell this right. El restaurant, eh, el restaurante, oh, lo siento. No, no good at pronunciation there. El restaurante is a restaurant. Now this one, you might be struck just going to move up a teeny. You might be struck uh, and think, oh, actually, because I'm saying it, I think you should get this one. This one, cinema. Okay? Because again, you can see we've got the same beginning of the word. Now, these ones, I was being a little bit, I don't know, optimistic, cruel. Anywho, this one, if I tell you that pan is Spanish for bread, and you can see that this one is a bakery. This one, I'm going to give you an English word that might help you with the word ganiseria. Okay, if I say carnivore, 
What do carnivores eat? Yes, they eat meat. So this actually is a butcher's shop. Okay, we'll just call it a butcher's. Okay, that was fun, wasn't it? Okay, let's carry on. So here we are. We've arrived at the fruit and vegetable store. Don't worry, you have seen all of these names before because a long time back, probably when we first started Spanish, you did see these names. I particularly remember doing it with one uh, year four class that I was working with. Okay, so let's start off with the first fruit I ever learnt the name of, manzanas. Okay, so these are apples, rojas y verdes. Red apples, that's what you've got from rojas, and green apples, verdes. Okay, you can see they agree with the name. Okay, this is one of my favourites because it, it's the name of the fruit and it's the name of the colour, naranjas. Okay, did you give that one a go? I hope you did. Here we are here. Now you can actually call this one banana, but I thought it'd be more interesting to give it a, a Spanish, a more sort of like mysterious Spanish name, uh, platano. Platano. Oh good, you tried that one too. So here we have two types. Oh look, these grapes are red. Uvas rojas, which again agrees with the noun. And uvas verdes. Okay, good. Have a go at this. Uvas. It's got a V, but we'll make it a nice soft B again. Don't forget that guys. And then we have melon, melon, which even if you didn't know the Spanish, you'd know. Um, I just thought I'd pop this one in. Uh, very popular, particularly at, at school. Uh, lots of people love this one. Bit of watermelon, sandia, sandia. Okay, so we've seen las frutas, the fruits. Now we're going to go for las verduras, las verduras, the vegetables, okay? So I have several vegetable names that I'm actually quite fond of. It's strange, but true. Okay, here we go. Got a carrot here, zanahoria. Good. Pepino, or cucumber. Here's another favourite, lechuga, lechuga, lovely. This one here, again, you almost don't need the Spanish, the mate, because it's so like the English, isn't it? And there are actually, again, two names for potato, but I thought I'd give you the simpler one, papa. Great. Okay. Now, just for a bit of fun, I found this video here for you to watch. It's a simple song about salads, although I am a little confused and I'm not going to feature this very much, but I just thought I'd show you this. I'm a bit confused why they've got pumpkin in a salad. Who knows? But the one you're looking for, if you hear uh, zapalo, that means pumpkin. And then they have another one, which is slightly less confusing because some people do do have this in their salad, espinaca, espinaca, which is spinach, okay? But watch and enjoy. This is el baile de, de la ensalada, the dance of the salad. You need to see this. So pause me and watch it, it's great. Fantastic. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's move on to my next slide. Yes, he talks about um, moving his, moving your body and I hope you got the attention. Prepara. Attention. Prepare. Okay. 
Right. Now, before we go any further, I just want to make sure that we know our numbers up to 50, just in case, you know, you never know how much stuff is going to cost or how much is going to weigh. So I had thought to do this completely live and go through all the numbers from one to 31 live. Uh, but I thought we'd do it in a bit more of an interesting way than that. These ones here, we're going to make sure you do know those because these are crucial for moving on. Um, these ones, you're not going to see anywhere else, so we will do those. But the rest of them, I reckon that you could actually work out yourself. And then, oh, look, I've put the link to that great song, Gwenta. So you need to see that because that's numbers up to 30 and it's done in a possibly more fun way than Mrs. Harmer, although that's, I don't know. It's probably not possible, but let's just go make sure that you count these together. I'm going to count, you're going to repeat. I'll go up to 15 and then please do watch Cuenta because it's really good. Okay, so, yo primero, tú después. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Okay, now for these ones that are unique, you won't find them anywhere else apart from if you start getting things like 115, uh, 230, that sort of thing. We're not going there. We're just going to make sure we know these. Okay, ready? Once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. Wonderful. Now, the reason you need to even know the is, is because these numbers here, look, they start off with a root that means the 10 with the other number. So I'll just do this first one just to make sure that you can see what I mean. Come on. There we are, right. So this one, 16, is 10 and 6. So it's diesi. Put one of these when, on when it's after the 6. Diesi 6. Okay, so these ones, I reckon you can work them out. Quick go at that now. Great, great. You were quick, fantastic. And then you get to 20, then there. And then because you've got to have a root of, for these ones of 20, so this first one, have a quick workout with the person next to you. What am I going to be typing here? Then the Yes, you're right, it is Bente Uno. There it goes, because you're basically saying 20 and one, but all squished together in one word. So for these ones, I'm going to give you a little moment, see if you can work those ones out. Okay, I'm going to stop you there and advise that you go and watch Gwenta. It takes less than two minutes and you can make sure that you've got all your numbers up to 30. I'll wait for you. Pause me. Okay, so now you've watched that, you know that 30 is 30. And then 31 is where two the numbers that are squished together come apart. Because as you can see, for the numbers that are, have a 10 root and a 20 root, it's all one word. For numbers over 30 and from then on, 
it is the 10, as it were, so 30 is part of the 10 times table, uh, 30 and one, okay? And then it's 30 and two, yes? And then it's 30 and three. Again, going to give you a little time to work this out because if you know these, you cannot go wrong. Okay, I'll give you a moment to work out a few of these. Okay, so hopefully you went from 31 and I'll save them and then you see if you can fill in the blank before I finish off the number, I'll show you what I mean. So you should have had trayenta y uno, trayenta y dos, so two, 30 and two, trayenta y tres, Trayenta y cuatro, trayenta y cinco, trayenta y seis, trayenta y siete. Trayenta y ocho, trayenta y nueve, so that was 39. Here we go then, we're going to go to 40. 40 is 40. Everybody say 40. Fantastic. And this follows the same rule as this, in that you say the 10, 40, uh, and then you add the number. So it's always 40 and 1, 40 and 2, 40 and 3, 40 and 4. So just so you hear these, you can join in if you want to. I'm just going to say them to you. Um, but you can easily, easily work these out, okay? So, Cuarenta y uno. Cuarenta y dos. Cuarenta y tres. Cuarenta y cuatro. Cuarenta y cinco. Cuarenta y seis. Cuarenta y siete. Cuarenta y ocho, cuarenta y nueve, and you get to 50, cincuenta. And that would follow on. If you were saying 51, you'd have to say cincuenta y uno, and it would just carry on. So from 30, the pattern is always the pen, and then whatever the number is after that. Hopefully that made absolute and complete sense. Anywho, let's carry on with our fruit and vegetable quest. So here we are. We're ready to look for some fruit or vegetables to make some salad. Or maybe fruit and vegetables to make some salad. Maybe you like to mix, I don't know, cucumber in the fruit salad, oranges on top of your lettuce. I've had that before. Okay, so to make sure we can ask for this sort of thing. I'm going to just put that down there. Um, you need to say to whoever you're asking to buy from, cuánto cuesta? Let me hear you say, cuánto cuesta? Fantastic. And that means how much does it cost? So you'd use that if you were buying an apple, okay? Una manzana, cuánto cuesta? Okay, an apple, how much does it cost? However, I've put lots of these 
in plural. I've put them for more than one thing. So in that case, it's a little bit like gusta turned into gustan because you were talking about more than one thing that you liked. Guestan is what you have to say for if there's more than one thing you're asking. So say I fancied to buy some cucumbers down here. I'd have to say, ¿Cuánto cuestan los pepinos? Or, los pepinos, ¿cuánto cuestan? The cucumbers, how much are they? Okay, so you need to use that if you're asking for more than one thing. Again, I'm going to give you a little time to see if you can work out how much all this lovely produce is worth. Okay, because we're going to have a little bit of a, a thing on the next slide and you kind of need to know. Okay. If you like, just pick one thing and see if you can work out how much I've said that cost. I tell you, these are not reasonable prices. They're just a little crazy. I've just picked random prices. This is possibly the worst value produce ever. But don't worry, it's very useful even so. Okay, now I ought to explain, I've got a word in here that I haven't told you what it is, but I wondered if you could guess, because again, it's quite like the English, gramos, gramos. Hmm, it's a type of weight. Yes, it's a gram. Okay, and here I've worked in euros, because in Spain, they do use euros, okay. Um, so there we are. This is a place, this is a city. Not only do they speak Spanish, they use euros. Okay, so we have las manzanas, 10 euros por 20. I hope you said that was 10 euros for 20 of them. Los platanos, 6 euros por 12. I hope you said 6 euros for 12. That could be good value, I just don't know. Las lechugas, the lettuces. Those are uno euro cincuenta, get it out, centimos por dos. One euro and fifty cents for two. Again, is that fairly value? I don't know. Okay. Los tomates, those ones, ocho euros por dieciséis. Oh my goodness, I've just seen a terrible typing mistake. Just while you're working that one out, I've got to put the accent back in because once it's past the six, and that gives you a clue what this is, uh, you have to have uh, an accent on there. Okay, eight euros for 16. Okay, las zanahorias, uno euro for 15. Yes, it's one euro for 15. Los pepinos, cinco euros por dos. Five euros for two. Las papas, dos euros for 25 gramos, two euros for 25 grams. Los melones, dos euros por uno, two euros for one. Okay. Las naranjas, tres euros por seis. Oranges are three euros or six of them. I think that's pretty good value. I'm not sure, but who can say. Last one then, las uvas, cuatro euros por cuarenta gramos. Four euros for 40 grams. Okay, let's go on to the next slide because here's what I'm wanting you to get involved in. Okay, so you are going to have a 
conversation. Don't worry, I put all the prices of everything up here. So you put it all to hand. I've done an example one. And if you just have that conversation, um, do both sides. I want you to have a go at saying both sides of the conversa conversation. Um, then uh, yes, you, if you get adventurous, you can swap the fruit or the vegetables that you put in here. But here's the conversation that I would like you to have, okay? And to demonstrate, I'm gonna have to be two people. It's tough, you might have to do this as well. Okay, so the first line says, por favor, please, tienes las manzanas? Do you have the apples? ¿Cuánto cuestan? How much do they cost? Okay, so first person does have quite a bit to do, but don't worry, we're going to leave this up so you can look at this. And then to answer, obviously you've looked at the price, you're a good shopkeeper. Diez euros por vente. Okay, 10 euros for 20. Okay, make sure that you swap so both of you have that, that conversation from both sides. Um, and as I say, if you're feeling very adventurous, uh, you could branch out and, and substitute apples for any one of these, okay? It's all here. I'm gonna pause for a moment uh, so that you can have a go at this. Okay, now some of you might have got a bit adventurous and seen that I, I've said los melones, hopefully you'd say un, un melon. Okay, let's move on. So, the last thing I want you to do is a sheet I have entitled las frutas, las verduras, sorry I'll put the teeth in and try that again, las verduras, Y los números. Okay, so what I want you to do on this sheet, also known in English as the fruits, the vegetables and the numbers, is I would like you to write the singular name for these fruits and vegetables and I've included some that we haven't talked about yet but I'll just point them out on the way. So this, here's how I had to fill in this sheet and I've picked one because as you remember in Spanish you have feminine nouns, which apple is one, and you have masculine nouns, which banana is one, okay? So all I want you to do is put the singular for the, okay? And the name of the fruit, obviously you just take the S off, okay? Um, this one, I actually have got this here for, for a reason. You're going to say, Mrs. Harmer, you've given us the singular already. Oh, the plural already, I'm so sorry. Um, this one, um, I have given you that there because, as you can see, it changes from the plural to the singular. You have to, if you're making it plural, you have to lose that accent there and put ES on the end, los limonois. Los limones, okay? So I did that there, just to be fair. It's a bit like melon. Melon does the same thing. So if you were making it lots of melons, you'd say los melones. Um, if it's one melon, it has an accent on the O like this. Also, I popped broccoli in there, even though you can't make that plural, okay? It's just el broccoli. You, can't, you don't have broccolis, do you? No, no. Okay. Um, it's got a few. I'll give you the little tour here. My favourite 
possible vegetable name. I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't get out much. Uh, los hongos, okay, mushrooms. But it, this is very, very straightforward. I, I don't want tough times for you, but I did want you to know these names of fruits and vegetables, okay. And then at the bottom, for your delectation and delight, I have for you uh, the numbers from 31 to 50. Now then, these are all very possible for you to do uh, because uh, I've got everything in there you might possibly need. So if one number doesn't have one thing, ooh, like this one has got something missing, uh, you'll see it somewhere else in another number. Oh, look over here. So whatever is missing, have a look round and see if you can fill it in from what you do have. I'm going to I'm just point it out again. OK, last time, these are all numbers that are in the 30s, aren't they? And oh my, that word's missing. OK, now I've made it so completely, completely obvious. I feel like you're going to have you're going to be all over this. You're going to be all over this. So I'm going to say goodbye now. Happy Spanish. Ah. Oh. Feliz Español. Adiós. <laughs>